Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today we have a very fun project that I have been excited about for months in the past, for the past months and I know that you have been as well. What am I talking about? I am talking about the Dahlia Garden that I got all the beautiful tubers from Laura of Garden Answer. If you will remember back in September, Jerry and I went to go visit Laura and Erin and help them convert their cold frame into a heated greenhouse. While we were there, of course, we had lots of fun. Laura's dahlias were just in spectacular, I mean, they were in all of their glory, absolutely gorgeous. And while we were there, Laura was kind enough, generous enough to say that she would send me a box of her dahlia tubers this spring. She did, uh, they came, it would have been uh, mid to late May, I had to hold off on them, planting them just for a little bit because we had a week of basically solid rain. And the thing was with the dahlias and with our clay soil, I'm most worried about is that our ground will be too wet um, when they are in their bulb stage, not when they have foliage on them, but um, that they could rot. And so watching both Laura and then other information with dahlias is that you've got to be careful before they sprout not to give them too much water. Well, we had tons of water that week and so I held off. I just planted them this week. I think you can probably see all the silver little tags. Those are all of the different names. She sent me over probably, I, I, did, a, I did a spreadsheet. She inspired me also with her spreadsheet. 31 different varieties of these gorgeous tubers and they were, um, just massive. Some of them were huge, some of them were little, but they were all, they had little sprouts on them already. Um, so I spent the other day, let's see, today is Saturday. I was, um, Wednesday, I was out here planting them and it was hotter than blue blazes, but I got them in the ground and I did exactly what Laura said. So we just, um, you can see, let's see if I can go this way. There we go. So you can see that we have the, um, the T post, I think they're called T posts. They're those nice, really sturdy, um, metal posts because we do have to stake them. So just like what Laura does, I did them six feet apart. Like I literally watched her video where she was planting dahlias and I did exactly what she did. Six feet apart on the, um, stakes, the tubers themselves are a foot apart, four to six inches in the ground. And then I, um, of course, use my power planter auger to aug all the holes. I laid down my tape measure, went every foot, augged a hole, came back with biotone, put biotone in the hole, um, then went ahead and laid down the tubers, of course, with the little growth shooting up. Everybody got a name tag, so you can see all the little um, metal stakes there with the little name plates on them so everybody is labeled when they come up i will know what they are and then um we came back with jerry was helping me um on that part and help lay down a little bit of extra compost in these beds so we have three different beds let me spit, uh, flip the camera around and let me show you here you can see we've got the three beds if you remember we showed you when we um plowed up this area and got it ready. Each of the beds are a little bit of a different length just because of the shape of the land. So this first bed is the shortest, then it goes a little bit longer, and then that farthest row is the longest. Basically, we had about a, a total length of like 120 feet, 130 feet in all three of these beds. So the tubers were able to fit in here really well. And then the bed width is wider than what Laura does is because we use the tractor. And so this is the width of the tiller on the tractor. So the final bed is actually about probably four feet, four and a half feet wide. Um, so we went ahead and got all of the tubers in. I planted them. Um, when you're looking at it this way, all of the tubers are on the right side of the, the post. And then I realized, I was like, you know what? I have got tons of room on the left-hand side. So today what we are going to do, we are going to plant some um, other flowering plants on there. So you can see we've got all sorts of, like this is emperor over here. Then there was gudo. Then we've got, um, 
Natalie G. So what you can see is here, like I've got, I have labeled Natalie G here, and then there's a big empty space. Those are all Natalie G's in there, and then another Natalie G because I was starting to run out of room. So all of them are in here, but we do have lots of room here on the other side of the bed. So we are going to plant some flowering seeds. All right, so what we're gonna do is, before I get started on the seeds, I am gonna go ahead, I've got some black twine, and I am gonna go ahead and string those up on these poles. I didn't do that earlier just because I was dead dog tired. I, it, it was really hot that day and I was just done. I got them in the ground, I got them watered the first time, and I was like, okay, Jenny's out. <laughs> Cold shower, here I come. So we're gonna do that first is get go ahead and get the twine up. Laura says to do it um, at two feet and three foot interval with her she was saying because of course her wind and that they do get huge right and they can get four feet tall and so they need support because you don't want them to fall over um, my quote concern is it was interesting because when I was watching her one of her latest videos and she was saying that she um, has to she plants them on a certain side of the twine so that way when the wind blows it pushes them up against the twine I'm in a different situation where her wind comes from the side, my wind comes from front to back. And so I may have to stake more of my dahlias than she does as far as like, you know, attaching them to the twine because they're gonna tend to want to blow this way. And um, so we decided, we wanted the rose to go this way because it makes sense with the lay of the land. So we're gonna get the twine up on that and then we're gonna plant lots of fun flowering um, like annuals, right? So we've got, I've got sunflowers, I've got all sorts of fun things in here because I had ordered these and I, I didn't have, I had no expectations on what Laura was gonna send me. So when we made these beds, I said, I wanna fill up this little nook with these flower beds thinking, you know, maybe I would get like a row of dahlias and then I could use the other two rows for sunflowers and zinnias, those kinds of things. Well. Laura was so generous that the two, the dahlias took up all three beds, but our beds are wider. So when I was planting, I was like, heck, I'm gonna go on the other side and plant my other flowering annuals. Now, maybe I'll regret that later. I don't know, this is the first run, right? First year, we're gonna try it out. So I wanna go through and just show you um, what gorgeous flowers um, that I have chosen. I have high hopes for these. Um, so without further ado, let's get going. So, and I, all of my sources, the vast majority of them do come from Johnny Select Seeds. I love this company. We have ordered from them for years and years and years. When we were, you know, beyond before this, we were at the farmer's market selling produce and we would always get our vegetable seeds from Johnny's extremely high quality company. I highly recommend them. And then some, some others come from the John Sheepers, the Kitchen Garden Seeds, another great seed company, um, some fun different kind of heirloom varieties. So without further ado, all right, we're gonna try some of the giant marigolds. So these are, um, I think they're also called like African marigolds. They get really tall. So they're not the little short marigolds and they have big, huge um, flowers on them. They're great for cutting. So we're gonna do the giant yellow, which is just that gorgeous classic yellow giant orange because you know me i do enjoy a nice bright orange flower um, and then we're going to do the cocoa gold uh, that is um, kind of a little bit of a different shade of the orange than the giants but that again will be really fun and then of course your marigolds will help deter other pests so that's a really great um, plant to put in with your vegetables whatever kind of marigold it is because it helps deter from this with the scent other you know harmful bugs that could eat your plants um so we're going to do those then i'm going to try i actually started these seeds indoors and then i forgot to water them <laughs> so they got toasted um but this is from the john sheepers this is the night phlox it's the midnight candy and it is a flowering phlox that blooms at night and has a delicious um, scent to it. So my plan was is that I would put it close to the patio. Well, I don't have anywhere in the patio to put it. So I'm just going to direct sow it here. And if it takes off and does well, great. But the whole thing is, is that it's the scent comes out at night. So when we're sitting on the patio, hopefully we'll be able to smell it. So that'll just be a funsy that we put in there. And then Cosmos. You cannot go wrong with Cosmos. It is like one of those iconic flowering annuals in a cut flower garden. 
So I have two different mixtures. I have the Early Sensation Cosmo mix from the Kitchen Garden Seeds. Beautiful pastel colors, fantastic. And then Daydream Sensation. Just there's something about Cosmos that are so romantic and wispy and beautiful. They will do really well. Then we also from Johnny's, I got the Cupcakes Blush. And this again will be a, a new one for me, but they say that they're just that delicate and they look like, like cupcake wrappers. Like they have kind of that texture to them. So that'll be fun. Now, asters, why not? Let's just go for it, right? So we did the Bonita White Aster and we did the King Size Apricot Aster. This is gonna be like loads of color in here, gorgeous. If every fingers crossed everything does well, it'll be gorgeous. Now, then we moved into sunflowers. Now, sunflowers, Jerry and I have a huge long history with growing sunflowers because in our farmer's market days, we would grow sunflowers as cut flowers and we would put them in like the 50 gallon trash cans and we would just huge sunflowers. And so we were really known for selling um, just gorgeous stems of sunflowers at the farmer's market. So I am, I have no doubt about these will do great. The Pro Cut series is really a nice one because they're pollenless. So when you, they're meant to be a cut flower. So when you cut them and you bring them inside your house, they're not gonna drop pollen and make a mess, you know, in your house. Um, they, are, they will be a single bloomer though. So it's just one flower per seed. These are not branching. So we have the Pro Cut Peach, Pro Cut Orange, Pro Cut Red, Pro Cut Plum, Pro Cut Orange Excel and Pro Cut White Night. So between all of those, they are gonna be gorgeous. I do think what I'm gonna do with the sunflowers is I'm gonna mix all the seeds together and then just sow them so that way we'll have a sunflower row that or two or however many they'll go. Um, we'll just have this gorgeous mixture of sunflowers beside the dahlias. So without further ado, what I'm gonna do is just get the twine. I'm gonna go up two feet do a string, do it three feet, do another string. I'm gonna do all three of these. Um, I'm gonna do it before I plant my seeds. That way I can step in the bed on this side, knowing that I'm not gonna disturb any seeds and I won't have to go over the dahlias. I'm doing this now. I guess I could wait until I have some growth popping out from my dahlias, but two things. One, I have time and it's cool this morning, so let's go ahead and get it done while I'm here in the space, do it. I've learned that. And then two, I happen to have a 70 pound uh, four-legged four, fur baby that uh, is having to learn that these are flower beds and not to cut through them. So if I put up the twine, that will be a visual for her, say, oh, I can't go that way, I need to go around. So it will keep Brenna from tearing through these flower beds um, and disturbing anybody. So. Let's just get that twine up and then we'll get some seeds in the ground. All right, my friends, so I've got the first row all stringed up. Uh, <laughs> this is why I wear garden gloves because, um, yeah, I stuck my finger through here and rolled it and there's metal right there and it just, yeah, it got me pretty good. Look at that, ugh, yeah. So I'm gonna go in, do a little first aid, put my gloves on and then I'll do the other two rows with the uh, twine. Jeez, gardening isn't for the faint of heart now, is it? <laughs> All right, finger is all bandaged up. Megan took good care of me. And uh, so I'm gonna put my gloves on and get the rest of these done. Those are, uh, they're all up. Um, are they perfectly two feet, three feet up in the air? No, they're not. Uh, are they perfectly level? Probably not. That's just working by yourself. 
it'll work. If not, and I need more support, I can come back in later. Now, we are gonna get those seeds planted. I think what I'm gonna do is put the sunflowers on the row farthest away from us right now because that is my longest row and that is what I have the most of, like as a whole collection, right? So I'm gonna mix those sunflowers together, put them in that row, and then we will work our way back. Um, so let's go get those together. Okay, so I have my container here. I'm gonna pull out all of my sunflowers. I'm trying to find them. Here we go. There are ah, probably going to be, I'm not gonna do all of them because there's 50 seeds in a packet. And basically you can plant sunflowers as far apart as you want or as close as you want. trying to sit here and think you know <laughs> y'all been around me for very long you know you know what I do you know what I am I'm just gonna dump them all in there so when we first started growing sunflowers like we were very methodical right because it says we've never done them before and so when you read it it said that you can space them a foot apart so I literally took the tape measure out there one of those long tape measures and laid it down on the row and every foot I put a sunflower. Well, let me tell you, we had absolute trees growing because the trunks on those things were massive. So, lesson learned, the further apart you plant your sunflowers, the bigger your stalk is gonna be, right? The thicker it's going to be. Um, the closer you put them together, the thinner it's going to be. So depending on how you're gonna use them, which these are gonna be, you know, for, for cut flowers. So you want them, you don't want a big, huge hunk of a stalk in your vase because then you can't put very many flowers in there. Um, so I probably will go just go ahead and I'm just going to make these sunflowers fit this row. I have my handy dandy Cobra. You know how much I love this tool. So I'm just going to go along, uh, not quite to the edge of where the stakes are, just out just a little bit. I'm going to do my row, come back, drop my seeds in. You plant them a half inch deep. So I'll plant them and come back and scoot some soil back on top of it. And then once all the seeds are in the ground, I will come back through and shoot them with some water to help the soil settle down. We got some lovely rain yesterday. It was a nice, slow, steady rain for a couple of hours. So the soil is already nice and damp, which is perfect. Um, but I do just want to hit it with just a little bit of water so that if there's any air pockets, it'll settle those seeds in and everybody will be real happy. So sunflowers are going in. So all the sunflowers are in. Um, I made all of them just fit on that row. Once they germinate and they come up, if I need to thin them out, I can easily do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put all of the giant marigolds, I'm gonna mix them just like the sunflowers. I'm going to put them on this row. And then on the third row, that is where I'm gonna put the cosmos and the asters. I think what I'm gonna do is maybe mix I might mix all the Cosmos together. And then I think with the Asters, I'll probably mix those two. So, you know, we'll just go with it and, and get it done. And um, yeah, get them in the ground. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Use my Cobra, make my little trench, go in, drop the seeds, come back with my little rake, cover them up. Once everybody's in the ground, we'll get the hose and we will give everybody a nice little drink of water and get the dirt to settle.
All right, my friends, all of the seeds are in the ground. They're covered. They are well watered and now we just wait. So my maintenance on these will be until they germinate, I will come through every day and just give them a light dusting of water. Um, I wanna keep my soil damp and moist so that they germinate. One of the, the downfalls of having clay soil is that if um, it dries out on the top, it can form a crust. And so it's hard for those little germinated seeds to pop through. Um, that's one reason why we added, of course, the compost and um, all that nice um, bagged material in there, organic matter in there to help loosen up some of that soil, um, that red clay soil. So what I'll do, like I said, is just come through here, give it a little shot of water every day to keep it damp until they germinate and then I can back off. This will be on irrigation. You probably saw that we have, um, I'll walk you over there, um, that we have some trenches. Jerry is waiting on a couple of irrigation parts and then he is going to um, run some drip tube for me. So he went ahead before we put the post in the ground and put the dahlias in, he went ahead and trenched it. So this is all trenched and it connects back over here to the beds around the patio. That is all on its own separate zones. So this garden will be on its own zone so we can control it. We will run drip tube to it and so therefore it will be on a regular watering schedule because as you can see the sun is coming out. I was out here early in the morning because my beautiful Fuji Green Giants give me shade. This is probably about uh, it may be 10 o'clock. I'm not quite sure what time it is. Um, 10 o'clock in the morning so now it's in the sun and it will get hot 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 sun all day long because the sun will set over here and it will not go in the shade until the sun gets really low in the ground <laughs> low in the ground oh, i think jenny needs another cup of coffee uh it, before it gets low uh which will probably be you know in the summertime can be like eight o'clock 8 30. so this is definitely a full sun spot it may have been a little deceiving when we first started uh jenny was just trying to be smart and not kill herself in the sun but yeah everybody's in the ground we'll keep them watered keep it weeded. A lot of people have asked like how do I keep weeds out of my flower beds? Um, one of course that thick layer of mulch. Obviously that's not going to be an option here um, and so I can't use any kind of pre-emergent because I just planted seeds and that would prevent my seeds from coming up. So really my only method is pinching, pulling them out. Um, if you walk through your garden every day and you see little small baby weeds, pull them get them when they're tiny instead of when they're huge and make a huge impact. Um, obviously this, you know, we told you that this is a rough spot. We've got a lot of grass to sow this fall. So keeping up with the weeds this year is this summer is going to be a full-time job, especially on the edge. Now I can come with the weed eater and the mower and get pretty close to it, but I've got to be on top of it. Otherwise it could really get away from me. Um, so with all the watering that I'm doing, there are definitely weed seeds probably in here. I will just have to make sure that I know what is a weed seed and what is a flowering seed that I just planted. All right, so it is Saturday, the nursery is open, so I got to get over there, I got to skedaddle, get over there and talk to some folks. Of course, we will keep you updated on this. As soon as the dahlias pop up, show some growth, um, I will definitely uh, let you know and keep you posted on this whole spot, but it's gonna be gorgeous. We'll see you soon. Have a great day. Bye, friends.